In this example, a piano is thrown upward at 33 meters per second at a 65 degree angle. And we're told to find three things, the time that it spins in the air, the maximum height that it reaches, and how far away from its starting point that it lands. Now, just to facilitate discussing this, I'm going to name some points on its path. I'll call the starting point A, and the peak here I'll call B, and then the landing point here where it hits, I'll call that C. So the initial velocity, instead of calling it V0, I'll call that VA. And VA, we're told, is 33 meters per second. Now this number, 33 meters per second, won't actually show up in our solution to the problem. And the reason is, that initial velocity is at a 65 degree angle. That initial velocity consists of two parts what I'll call VAX and VAY. And those are the numbers that we need, the horizontal component and the vertical component of the initial velocity. The key to solving this problem is to consider the horizontal and the vertical motion separately. So in this case, we're given the initial velocity in an angle. We'll use that information, the 65 degree angle and the 33 meters per second, to find VAX and VAY. So we'll start off doing that. VAX is going to be VA times the cosine of the angle, and VAY, the vertical component, is VA times the sine of the angle. And so we just put in the numbers. Uh, VA is 33 and theta is 65. So 33 times the cosine of 65 comes out to 13.95 meters per second. And VAY is 33 times the sine of 65, and that comes out to 29.91 meters per second. That's the horizontal and the vertical component of the initial velocity. Those are the numbers we'll use in our calculations. Now we'll start off with the, the vertical motion. And let's uh, call up the positive direction. And let's write down what we know. Vertically, I know the initial velocity. I'll call that VA is, and I use this number, 29.91 meters per second. That's the initial velocity vertically. I'm only considering the vertical motion right now. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Gravity is pulling down, and since up is the positive direction, down has to be negative, so the acceleration is negative. Now the other things I know are this. The height at point A is zero. The height at point B, I don't know. But I do know the velocity at point B is zero. Now that's important to understand. At point B, it's actually moving to the right. But if I'm just considering vertical motion, at point B, it has no vertical motion. That's when it's as high as it is going to get. And at that moment, just for an instant, it's not moving up or down at all. So the vertical velocity at that point is zero. Now to solve this, there's a few different ways we could do it. The easiest way, though, is to think about the motion from A to B and only consider that motion. So I'll consider the motion from A to B. And I know this. I'm going to think about this equation. V equals V0 plus AT. And remember what these mean. V0 is the initial velocity and V is the final velocity. In terms of my points A, B, and C here, I can write that equation like this. The velocity at point B is equal to the velocity at point A plus AT. If I'm considering just the motion from A to B, then A is my initial point, B is my final point. So instead of initial velocity V0, I have VA. Instead of final velocity V, I have VB. Same equation. These two equations are the same equation, just a little bit different notation. This notation matches what I have in the diagram. If I put in the velocity at point A and the velocity at point B and find the time, what I'll get for time is the time from point A to point B. And that's what I'll do. If I algebraically solve this for t, I get t is equal to vb minus va over the acceleration. And we can put in the numbers. The velocity at point b is 0 minus the velocity at point a. 
And for that, I use this number, remember, the, the vertical component, not my 33. I'm just considering the vertical motion, so I use the vertical component, 29.91. So it's 0 minus 29.91 meters per second divided by A, that's the acceleration, and that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And if you've set the problem up carefully, your negative signs will always work out correctly. In this case, I have a negative number divided by another negative number, so I'll end up with a positive number. And T, in this case, comes out to be 3.05. And you can see the meters canceling and one of the seconds canceling, leaving us with seconds. So it's 3.05 seconds. Now that's the time from A to B. So the total time from A to C, the total time in the air, is going to be twice that. And that's 6.1 seconds. So the 3.0 seconds was the time to the peak. And the total time is 6.1 seconds. Now I'm going to erase some of this so I have some room to solve the next part. The next thing I want to find is the maximum height, which will be the height at the peak. So I can use this equation, y is y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. What this equation will give me is the height y at any given time t. So I'll plug in a time t, put in a number for t, and I'll get out the height y at that time. If I want to know the height at the peak, then I need to plug in for t here the time for the peak. And so I'll be using this time, 3.05 seconds. If I put in 6.1 seconds right there, that's the total time. 6.1 seconds is the moment of impact. If I put in 6.1 seconds, I would get out a zero for y. And you can try that if you want to. What we're trying to find now is the maximum height. So instead of putting in 6.1, I need to put in 3.05 right there for both of those. y is going to equal y0, which is just 0, plus v0t. And for v0, remember, use the vertical component, 29.91 times the time, which is 3.05. That's the time to the peak, plus 1 half of a, which is negative 9.8, times t squared, which is 3.05 squared. Again, I'm using the time to the peak in order to get the height at the peak. When I put these numbers in, I get 91.2 meters minus, that minus sign comes from right there, minus 45.6 meters to get a height of 45.6 meters. So that's the height at the peak. Now I'll erase this to give me some room to work here and consider the horizontal motion to find how far away it lands. The horizontal motion, and what we know is this, the initial velocity horizontally is 13.95 meters per second. The acceleration horizontally is zero and the initial position horizontally is also zero. And what I want to do is find the final position. And again, I can use this equation, x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And in this case, the initial position is zero, and the acceleration is zero. So that second term goes to zero. So our equation simplifies to this. Distance is rate times time. So I can put in any number for t and find out how far it's moved horizontally. In this case, I'm going to use my, my initial velocity, 13.95 meters per second. And I'll put in my time of 6.1 seconds. That was the time from start to finish. So what I'll get out when I do this calculation is the distance from start to finish, how far it moves horizontally from point A to point C. The seconds cancel, leaving us with meters, and the calculation is pretty simple. Just pull out the calculator. 13.95 times 6.1 gives us 85.1 meters.